I felt like God was really putting it on my heart today to share my testimony because I do believe that we are in the final days and this is the most important message that I need to be getting out and tell people what God has done in my life in this recent year because it's really been this year that God has done a revival in my heart. I've actually just recommitted myself to him. I have been making tons of terrible mistakes for like the past like decade of my life. I was raised in a Christian home, was really blessed to be raised by amazing Christian parents and to be raised going to church. But at an early age, I started to get bullied and one of the first places I started to get picked on was actually at church because um, my parents, they homeschooled me. So church was like one of the first places that I started having social interactions. And girls at a young age are mean. <laughs> we started going to like a couple homeschool co-ops, like a one day a week kind of school for kids who are homeschooled. And it was like my only place to really socialize. And that was when I really started to get bullied like, severely. Like I just had people do like outrageously mean things to me. I don't know, I guess I was just kind of raised in this church setting, but I felt so picked on from the kids. And then actually there was like board members at that school and they really hated me too. And they would like pick on me when I was like a little kid and like dress code me for like having my shoulders out or like wearing leggings, like crazy stuff that they wouldn't do to other kids. And I don't know, I started to like have a hatred for like authority. Um, I started to want to rebel against being like this good kid because I had tried so hard to fit into the standard of being a good kid and it wasn't working for me. So I, <laughs> I started getting into trouble. I finally met a group of kids. <laughs> These kids were like, the first like public school friends that I had probably had. Anyways, they started introducing me to like shoplifting when I was 12. Then I, when I turned 13, stuff got a, a lot worse than that. I started like fitting in with this crowd of kids who were, I think they were really like trying to run away from like a lot of the traumas that they've experienced. I felt like I fit in with these kids. Let me tell you what, what, we were doing first introduced me to like party drugs started drinking i started smoking i started taking all kinds of party drugs from 13 to 15 i was basically like drinking alcohol every single day and taking party drugs multiple times a week it was horrible and looking back i don't know how i lived through that i was the only one in that group that never went to juvie but i did all that same stuff that they did that was god's hand on me protecting me because i that was that would have been more than i could have handled like we started stealing alcohol like lots of alcohol and we were reselling it and we were buying drugs with that money we were constantly going to every party we could you guys wouldn't even recognize me from that time in my life actually i'm going to try to find some of the old pictures from that time in my life and put it on here right now because i just want you guys to see how god can drastically take someone who's a drug addict i was a freaking thief i was a horrible person i blacked out so many times that time is a blur looking back in my life i don't remember it i was blacked out for more than 50% of that time in my life. It's horrible looking back on. And then I started going to like these raves and I would always sneak in or I had a fake ID and take tons of drugs at these things. I, it was God who saved my life because he woke me up. I remember the day clearly and I will tell you guys what happened because I, and I mean, God, I praying for the kids that were like me, just trying to find a place where they fit in in the world. They finally feel like these drugs are getting them away from their pain. They're feeling like they fit in with a the crowd. They're feeling loved. You know, you take that Molly stuff and you just feel so bonded with the people around you and your friends. But dude, it gets bad. The Molly, my body started to reject it. And praise the Lord, my body started to reject the drugs. Because every time I would take Molly at a certain point, my body would just immediately throw it up. And I actually was diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was eight years old. So I, I already suffer from an autoimmune disease. And um, praise the Lord that my body started to reject that Molly. I don't know if it was had to do with the Crohn's or if it was just the fact that I had been taking it too much. But, but God said, I'm not gonna let you 
get this in your system. You're going to throw it up every time you take it. So I stopped taking that stuff. Don't do it. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. I wish I could get back to who I, I wish you guys would have seen the kid that I was before I did all that stuff. I was like doing so much. I was literally doing a lot. And now I'm just like, feel like I'm kind of just like trying to survive. Very last time I, I did hardcore drugs, I remember I was at Paradiso. I forget the year. It might have been like 2016 or 2017. And I, I took MDMA. Okay, so... Let me tell you guys how hot it was at that at the gorge that day. It was like 115, or no, it was at least 110 degrees, okay? So it's already hot. You should not be taking drugs. You should not be drinking. You should not be out there. Just, if you're going to be out there, drink water. I took an MDMA pill, okay? Then I remember that it hadn't kicked in yet. I go into a porta potty okay? And in the porta potty it was probably like 160 degrees. I mean, it was so hot in there because like, it was already so hot in the... And I started to get really feeling sick and I was like, I have to get out of here as soon as possible. Got, like, fell out the doors, like, like literally, like, barely made it out. My friend's like, oh my gosh, are you okay? Like, stumbling out, like, immediately go, like, lay down in the grass. My friends were all like, oh my gosh, you're, like, white right now. I turned, like, a sheet of paper, like, the color of my shirt. I was just white. Like, I'm already pretty white, but you guys can't imagine. I was just, like, sour cream. Then I, I broke out into a cold sweat. Like, you could feel me. I was cold and clammy, and I was just dripping in sweat. And I started vomiting, but there was, like, nothing in my system to vomit because I had just been at the gorge partying for a couple days before this, and I hadn't really been eating much food. It was just, like... I was just vomiting up nothing and my body just kept making it happen over and over again and I like remember people just kept coming up to me and like hit this weed you know drink this water like trying to help me and no one took me to the freaking first aid tent by the grace of God by the grace of God 45 minutes of the most sick in the most near death, like my vision was going blurry, guys. I thought I was dying. I was like, yeah, there's a lot of people that die at, at Paradiso every year. I never thought it would be me. Like I've, I've been doing drugs for these years, but I, I'm about to die right now. I was like, I want to call my mom or something. So thankfully the drug did not kill me, but that was the most close that a drug has ever brought me to death. And I just think one of the closest that I have ever been to death in my entire life. And I said, after I took that drug and, and I started to recover, I said, I'm never doing this again. And then it got worse. Um, my friend who I was at the festival with, she had taken the drug. A little after I had taken mine, okay, and it started to have the same effects on her that it did on me. And I was actually able to get her to the first aid tent. And thank God I did, because she was in the first aid tent for over four hours with an IV in her arm, her eyes rolled in the back of her head, and I thought she was dying. And it was a horrible, horrible, horrible eye-opening experience. And I was like, just hearing the music and I was just like in this tent with like a bunch of people that were like dying from drug overdose. And I was like, this is eye-opening. I never want to do this again. I don't even want to like go to these events. Um, I got off drugs when I was about like 15 and a half and was at that music festival and I almost died. And then I got into a really bad relationship. And I was in that relationship for almost three years. And that just further damaged me on so many levels. I got into like the worst relationship I probably ever could have gotten into. I was abused physically. I was abused emotionally. I was manipulated. And I got cheated on, like, the whole time. Yeah, that sucked. I kept giving myself to somebody and, like, losing everything. And, like, God just wanted me to, like, give myself to him. And it was so hard for me to get out of. Because when you <laughs> get in those, like, when you learn an attachment style to a toxic person like that, like, it can be really, really, really hard to break. <sighs> so by the grace of God... I got out of that relationship in early 2019 
I mean, it was actually like really one of the most painful times in my life because I had just learned that I had been cheated on throughout the whole relationship. It was it was so hard to heal from that breakup. And I think that I didn't even want to fully deal with the healing. Immediately after we broke up, I jumped back into drinking a ton of alcohol and I got a fake ID and I started going out clubbing. Like like literally like every single weekend clubbing. I wasn't even old enough, I was like 18. And I was just like blacking out constantly. I don't remember like a lot of that time. That that like entire 2019 was, I was falling back into kind of who I was when I was like 13 to 15, not, not in the aspect of drugs. Cause I was, I still knew the drugs were bad, but I was falling into just drinking constantly. And, <sighs> That was a really bad time in my life too. Um, I ended up like not he like I wasn't healing like blacking out all the time so I didn't have to feel my pain. And around this time too, um, I was working at Nordstrom Clinique Makeup, and I did that for like two weeks. Um, every single time I got to work. I would arrive in the parking lot, I would like open my car door and throw up. I had such bad crippling anxiety and like social anxiety is something that I have like struggled with um, throughout my life. But for some reason at, at this time and at this job, I think it was just like the fact that I was working at the mall, I had that like, who am I going to see today? Like who's going to walk in? Like it was stressing me out. Then I came down with mono. I was really sick with mono for like three months. And I had to take an absence of leave from my clinic job. In this time of being on absence of leave from my work, I started on OnlyFans. And that was the worst decision I ever made in my life. I said, what's the difference of just posting, you know, some pictures on this platform like I'm I was already posting like you know some bikini photos but like I wasn't really going like crazy with it you know bikini photo here and there like mainly like photos and clothes on like my Instagram at that time started in OnlyFans um started you know like people on there whoa they started like making me feel so pressured to do more than I was comfortable with and I was trying to like keep my boundaries for like, and I did keep like boundaries throughout the whole time. I mean, I was like getting like addicted to like trying to get into be like this top, top, top creator. And it was like so motivating to like, just do more than <laughs> you really wanted to. Cause like, I mean, like, let's say like you send out like like you could do these like messages where people open it and like the more raunchy you would make the message the more money you would have the next morning when you wake up right as like the pandemic hit basically um i saw only fans starting to surge every single month that i was doing it i would see more money than the month before started getting sucked into the dark world of OnlyFans and it was starting to mess with me and change my perspective and my perception of men. Woo! It started to warp my reality. It's something that you probably won't understand unless you fully experience um, having an OnlyFans account and interacting with the kind of people who subscribe to those accounts. And he you knows some of the people I will say are, were very nice. And I think some of the people were good people, but oh wow, a lot of the people on there said some really damaging things that you just should not have to like, like read every day. You would get like more money the more that you would like be on there messaging these people, okay? And I for a while was trying to make myself be on their messaging people as much as I could throughout the day so I can make as much money as possible. And at the bare, bare minimum, I would reply to every single message once a day. And that was about like 200 messages usually. And I did that for like almost two years. 
Every single day I would do it, I would like have to just shut off my emotions and my morals and like I would feel the Holy Spirit convicting me because I still wanted to like all this time, like all these years of my life, still like hold on to the fact that I was raised in a Christian home and say, yep, I'm a Christian, like I love God, like I know I'm serving money, but like whatever. How bad can it be to just post my body, like whatever. No, no, I was writing off the truth. God has it laid out very clear in the Bible. It was causing my brothers in Christ to fall into lust and sin and I was ultimately dragging their souls down to Sheol because there was this one, oh let me get it, this one passage that stood out to me. I wrote this down in my prayer journal on December 29th of 2021. I had just listened to a Tony Evans, one of my favorite pastors, by the way, if you haven't checked him out, go check him out. He has been like the biggest encouragement to me throughout my journey in faith. And I had just listened to a Tony Evans sermon. Okay, so the application question said, what sinful patterns or behaviors do you have a hard time letting go of? I wrote down making money from being immodest. And it says, what spiritual disciplines or Bible commands have you resisted recently and why? Ooh, was that challenging? And you guys, I said Proverbs 7, okay? Let me let me read Proverbs 7 to you right now. Oh, this Bible lays it out very clear. Proverbs 7 says this, warning against the adulterous woman. That's who I was. You can't, you can't not be an adulterous woman and be doing that stuff, okay? Oh. This was so challenging. My son, keep my words and store up my commands within you. Keep my commands and you will live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Find them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. And to insight, you are my relative. They will keep you from the adulterous woman. From the wayward woman with her seductive words. Okay, that's all I was doing on OnlyFans. I was just saying some seductive words to get people to like open a message and and get as much money as I could. And it says, now listen to this. Verse six, at the window of my house, I looked down through the lattice. I saw among the simple, I noticed among the young men, a youth who had no sense. He was going down to the street near her corner, walking along in the direction of her house at twilight as the day was fading, as the dark of night set in. And I'll get into that too, because OnlyFans thrives at night time, you guys. Beyonce, when she says, on my demon time, might, she might start up OnlyFans. Demon time, that's like the devil's time where he does work at night, where he's making people go to clubs, blackout, party, do drugs, have sex with hookers go on only fans and talk to online hookers basically and like ha huh, all the bad junk happens at night okay as at twilight as the day was fading as the dark of night set in then out came a woman to meet him dressed like a prostitute and with crafty intent i was dressed like a prostitute number one and crafty intent number two you want to get money okay that's guys stop falling for these girls and I'm sorry that I was one of those girls. Stop falling for these girls trying to find, I don't know, I mean, maybe you guys are trying to find fulfillment or love, but they got crafty intent. These girls don't care about you, okay? They just want money and it will, and it will destroy your soul. You don't want that. It says, she is unruly and defiant. Her feet never stay at home. Now in the street, now in the squares, at every corner she lurks. I mean, think OnlyFans is just out there for anybody, a every corner. I mean, the internet is no more public than uh, public as it gets. She took hold of him and kissed him. And with a brazen face, she said, 
today I have fulfilled my vows and I have food from my fellowship offering at home. So I came out to meet you and I looked for you and have found you. I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes and cinnamon. Come, let's drink deeply of love to the morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. My husband's not home. He has gone on a long journey. He took his purse filled with money and he will not be home to a full moon. Listen to this. Verse 21. With persuasive words, she led him astray. Wake up, guys. That's what these OnlyFans girls are doing to you. They are leading you astray. They are leading you down to the pits of Sheol. It says, all at once, he followed her. <laughs> that sounds a lot like what you guys are doing, following these OnlyFans girls. I hope I'm speaking to some of you right now. It says, with her persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once, he followed her, like an ox going to the slaughter, okay? You hear what God says? This is the word of the Lord, okay? <laughs> he followed her, and it says he was like an ox going to the slaughter. That's what you guys are doing. God has it all spelled out here very clear for us. The warnings are clear. You can either choose to resist the truth, or you could choose to just accept the truth and love what God has intended for you and your life, because... Trust me, what he's intended for us is good and has purpose and meaning. And you don't want this junk that Satan is trying to convince us we need. Like a deer stepping into a noose till an arrow pierces his liver. Like a bird darting into a snare. Little knowing it will cost him his life. <sighs> God, God, I say a prayer over right now. Whoever is watching this video, if they are addicted to... OnlyFans or pornography or whatever it may be, Lord, please, I ask you in the name of Jesus, heal them, Lord. Break that curse over them, Lord. Don't let them go down to the pit. Don't let them go down to Sheol, Lord. Lead them to you. Convict them and show them that they need to fill that, that hole in their life with you, Lord. Lord, be with this listener right now. You love them so much. Please, God, please, please, please. Fill them with your love and your joy and your peace and your fulfillment. Get them out of whatever sin has them entrapped. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And I hope that if any of you are struggling with any of like pornography or you are one of my OnlyFans subscribers, I truly am so, 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 so sorry for what I was doing to you out of my own selfishness and just wanting money. I am so sorry. And I just hope that I can help some of you now because I I owe this to God and to you guys. Now listen to verse 24. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. This is the Lord speaking. Do not let your heart turn to her, her ways or stray into her paths. Many are the victims she has brought down. Her slain are a mighty throng. Her house is a highway to the grave, leading down to the chambers of death. <sighs> when I read that, you guys, oh, was that eye-opening to me. But it took me a while, okay? And it might take you a while. And God is patient. He's a merciful God. And we are so blessed to have him as our Lord Jesus Christ because he loves us. And he's fighting for you right now like he was. he's been fighting for me for all these years. And it's so, it's so easy to resist the word, but it's spelled out very clear for us here. <laughs> it says her house is a highway leading to the grave. Her house is a highway to the grave, you guys. To the grave. To hell. To, to be where Satan is, okay? Hell was a place designed for Satan. And that's where, that's where this OnlyFans and pornography and junk is going to lead you. To the grave leading down to the chambers of death. Do you want eternal life? Do you want to be united with the entire body of Christ and our Lord and our Savior and our Maker, our Father in heaven for eternity? Or is it really worth it to just like get sucked into the darkness that Satan's trying to pull us into? Guys, I hope that, I hope I'm getting through to some of you right now because this, it got me. So I want you guys to take a moment Ask the Holy Spirit to work in your heart through this because it's something that the Holy Spirit has to do for you like he did for me. And it's not going to be like a quick, easy fix. 
You gotta have, you gotta be filling yourself with God every day because the devil's gonna keep trying to suck you back into his ways every day. It's a constant battle, you guys. Okay, so to get back onto the track of my testimony and how I ended up quitting OnlyFans, let me just say, you guys, I was stuck doing OnlyFans for three whole years, you guys, and those were actually the worst years of my life, and you guys may have not realized that looking at my social media. You're like, oh, she's traveling a lot. Cool. No, I was so freaking depressed, and every one of those trips I was taking, I was just trying to run away from my own depression and suppress my emotions in a different way. Like, you know, you guys know how I was just talking about how I used to suppress my years of being bullied and feeling like no one would ever love me. I tried to suppress that with alcohol and drugs, get into bad relationship patterns with men who did not love me. I was mixed up, you guys. And then I found a new outlet. And you know, I finally had money. And you know, I thought money was everything for a while there. I, I started to fall into the our culture. Our culture is pushing that we need to be driving fancy sports cars. They make you feel bad nowadays if you don't have like a Hermes bag. It's crazy how much our culture is like pushing materialism and I was falling into that for years. So I have been doing OnlyFans for the first year, okay? I went on a trip with my my friend and her family. I love my friend and I love her mom and I was actually just starting to open up to them and tell them, like, I was like, hey guys, like, I've been doing this OnlyFans stuff for like a year, and you know, the money has been actually just starting to go up a lot in these recent months, but I'm feeling like this is messing with me. This is pushing me away from men. Like, I'm scared around men now. Like, I feel like they're all gonna look at me this way. Like, <laughs> it was so horrible. Like, looking back on that, horrible. I, I I should have. I wish I just got out of it then. Just I, I remember that was my first month where I had made seventeen thousand. The month before that I had only made ten. The month before that I had made like seven. Okay, you guys, it was going up fast. Okay, and I was getting more sucked in. And this was because the pandemic had like just began, and every month like it was starting to skyrocket because of the pandemic. So, you know, they were encouraging me to, you know, find, a pl make a plan to, like, get out of it and just, like, quit doing that. But it was literally three days after I had that conversation with my, my friend and her mom. Beyonce drops this song and she says on that demon time she might start a OnlyFans. Okay. And you know what? God actually showed me, like, recently, like, that was one of, like, Big, like the devil's like big schemes to like get girls into this because I texted my friend because I kid you not the day that song dropped everyone found out what OnlyFans was probably like one of the days I made the most money when she dropped that song I had such a and it and then it normalized it so much because then I saw like all these girls start an OnlyFans account and now I looking back I realized that was like the thing that thwarted my like wanting to get out of it it was like sales literally like okay i kid you not this is how it went i made seventeen thousand dollars that month that i had told my my friend and her mom like i just want to get out of this then beyonce drops that song then the next month twenty three thousand like, dollars i was like riding a high that was addictive and i kept chasing after that and and then I kept like saying okay it doesn't matter like just do it for the money just do it for the money and then I was like trying to grow my Instagram as much as I could so I was constantly posting like as raunchy of photos as I could and it was um really degrading I'll tell you guys how it went for me after I decided to resist God and resist what I knew was right, what I knew I shouldn't be doing. I'll tell you guys what happened to me and how it went for me so you can decide for yourself if you would rather have the money or put yourself and through and go through what I just went through for the last three years before God finally got through to me and said, wake the heck up, Rachel. For three years, I like basically lost all of my best friends. Actually, I didn't lose them because God bless them. They still have been texting me and they're still trying to reach out to me and they've still wanted to see me but I 
gosh, I pushed everyone away and completely isolated myself because it was getting to be too much to have to like try to reply to like all these guys every day but then to like keep up with friends on top of that and then I was already going into like such a weird mental state because the work was so unhealthy it's the most toxic job you can do when oh, just being degraded like that and being like so overtly sexualized and having to like pretend that you're enjoying it and just like go along with it and just like do it for the money it was horrible that i knew that wasn't i knew i was worth so much more than that that was never what i wanted to do with my life i mean i started taking lots of trips and i was just taking a trip like like as much as i could like and i would just go on all these trips by myself because i was like super isolated from everyone in my life and just pushing myself away from everyone and i was kind of like i just want to get alone i just want to be alone i just want to like so i would like go on a ton of trips and it was like kind of like the same thing that i was doing when i was like doing all that partying but i wasn't partying on these trips no i wouldn't work for like the whole time i would be on these trips so i would just kind of pretend like i'm ri living this super rich laid back travel luxurious lifestyle you know taking photos posting it on instagram and just pretending that I was like happy and pretending like I was enjoying my money and my life and pretending to myself, you know, every time I would like get to like a really nice like hotel or something, I would just still have this like deep sadness on the inside. And like, ugh, it was horrible. I just remember feeling like, wow, like no matter where I go, I could be at the coolest location in the world but my heart is still filled with, filled with so much emptiness and sadness. I don't even have like my friends anymore. Like I'm not even close to my family anymore. I don't even have my relationship with God. Like I couldn't even hear God's voice during this time of my life because I was so closed off from him. You know, your sin separates you from God. <laughs> it's been the most precious thing, getting back, being able to hear God's voice speaking to me. And that wasn't until that I like, I mean, I was hearing God speak to me throughout my sin too. He kept convicting me. That was the Holy Spirit. But it started to get really bad. And 2022 hit. That was freaking rough. I got very suicidal and in like January. And I started to like barely be able to do my job anymore. And so I was like seeing like the money like decreasing. But I didn't even really care. I was just like. It was like torturing myself at this point to even have to like go on there and post a immodest picture. Like it, it was getting to a, a bad, like a wor way worse level. Like every day was getting worse, okay? The pain in me was growing, like building up so much. And you know, you just keep trying to suppress it. The whole like 2022, like I, <laughs> like, so I got really depressed, really anxious, really suicidal. And then I actually started going to pray with my mom's auntie. I look up to her so much. We had like done some praying with her. Like that was actually how my, my brother got delivered from his asthma and from being allergic to dogs. We prayed with her. Jesus healed, healed him. I was getting to this point where I needed some deliverance. I wanted to die and, and I was going to take that out on myself. What's the money worth if you just want to die? So I went over to her house and we prayed against the spirit of suicide. Prayed against the spirit of depression. And I prayed forgiveness over like everyone who has wronged me in my life. And I did that for hours and wow, that day was life changing for me. Like after like seeing my family again, after praying and my dad was like the first thing he said to me, he's like, your whole demeanor seems like it's changed. Like, I can really see a difference in you. <laughs> and I just knew God was like, I felt different. After praying with her, um, oh my goodness, can I read you guys the note? So she wrote this to me on March, yeah, March 2nd, 2022. And she, and this, she wrote this the morning that before I came over to her house and she told me that she was spending time praying and talking to God and she felt like God put this on her heart to say to me. Okay? <laughs> this was a letter from God that like started to change my life. 
My precious Rachel, little lamb, that's what my name means. You have the kingdom of heaven at your disposal. My desire for you is that you would bring as it is in heaven to the earth realm. I have created you with a big heart that's full of compassion. Your potential and your giftings are unique, and I have destined you for a unique purpose. You have a calling on your life. Here's the caveat. De the devil knows it better than you do. Don't be surprised that the father of lies hates you. It's because I treasure you. My love for you runs deeper than you can comprehend. You are the apple of my eye. Get in the habit of wrapping yourself under the shelter of my wings. Psalm 91. And you, you will find new and fresh intimacy in your relationship with me. My heart is for you. Romans 8. <laughs> that note, you guys, I literally treasured this note. I read this note like twice a day for like over a month. God was working in my heart, you guys. When I went over there to pray with her, and like when she gave me this note, like I was still living my life of sin. I still had OnlyFans. I still had all my bad Instagram up. And she just showed me so much love. And she reminded me that God had a big purpose for my life. <laughs> And I just really started to like desire that closeness with the Lord. And I wanted to know what he, he has me for. He has me for to bring as it is in heaven to the earth realm. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, I've got to stop. I went over there a second time. Um, I still hadn't, you know, given up all of my life yet. I was still doing OnlyFans, still living in my bad ways. She told me to listen to a sermon from one of her favorite pastors okay and i tell you guys i clicked on the first random sermon i saw that he like his most recent one and it was talking about the breath of god i listened to that sermon and then at the very end of the sermon it, he says this he says god has placed it on my heart that somebody watching this has the spirit of suicide tormenting them he prayed against the spirit of suicide he rebuked the spirit of suicide and goodness i started just bawling my eyes out you know, i had just been experiencing suicidal thoughts for the past months and battling that and just hearing <laughs> that god placed it on the pastor's heart to like speak out to me in that sermon i knew god was speaking directly to me and it really touched my heart. And then immediately after this, it gets even more and more amazing. So the pastor said after this, he said, place your hand on your heart, close your eyes, and we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to place a word on our heart that, that he wants to give to us. And, and just let him speak, you know, just just ask him, Holy Spirit, like, what, what are you trying to tell me? Like, what what do you want me to know? Do you have any words for me? And... I've never done this before. Oh my goodness. That was the most amazing, amazing Sunday of my entire life. I placed my hand on my heart and I'm just saying, Holy Spirit, speak to me. Like, do you have a word for me? What, what do you want to place in my heart? And I've never, ever, ever had God speak to me so freaking clear. As my eyelids were closed, he first spells out the words, peace. I saw peace. And then, then I waited and I prayed and I was like, God, are you going to give me another word? And he did. He, I kept closing my eyes. I kept praying, waiting for him. And then he placed, then he spelled out harvest. Whew. And that was like a life changing moment for me. I just remember like going to see my mom and dad and be like god just spoke to me in two crazy strong ways first of all the spirit of suicide and then he just spoke to me and literally spelled out and told me what he wants me to do with my life ah uh, and i called up my oma and i was telling her like how excited i was that god had just spoken this words peace harvest to me and i was asking her oh my like those are amazing words but like what do you think this means she told me, I, I think that God's telling you that he wants you to harvest souls to peace and eternal life in him. 
Ah, oh, that's so amazing. So exciting. That day changed my life, you guys. I started to get really serious about what God was calling me to do. I just wanted to get rid of the junk at that point. And so it actually came um, the weekend of Easter, Easter weekend. I remember the night of Good Friday happened and, you know, I was I had, still hadn't deleted the OnlyFans yet, but I, I was like feeling all kinds of convictions and I was getting just like, it was on my heart. And I was just going through so much. I really needed the word of the Lord. I just did, like learned a little bit about fasting when you want to hear God better and get closer to him. And so I said, you know what? I'm going through a lot right now. I'm going to try fasting. So I fasted for the weekend of Good Friday. And then Easter Sunday came. I literally asked God. I said, God, would you just let me die on the cross with you this Easter Sunday? I said, I don't want to be the old Rachel anymore. God. Just make me new again. Make me whole. I said, I'll live for you, God. I just, I want to die to myself. I want to give it all to you now. I, it was so difficult. And I deleted OnlyFans. I just said, God, I give it to you. Take it. You paid the price for me. Like, it, I just take that. Take that money. I deleted the account. Oh my goodness. God really started speaking to me after I deleted the account. So I was fasting for Good Friday until like the next Thursday. And throughout this week, I experienced 19 metaphors from the Holy Spirit. And I just had to write these down like as fast as I could. I spent so much of that time just writing. And this was like, I don't even do like crazy writing, but trust me, like I could write a freaking book with all that he was putting on my heart and I just had to get out. Like, I was just typing like crazy. Oh my goodness, guys, I, I can't explain to you what how amazing it was to be so close to God and to be able to hear his voice like that. I've never felt so close to the Lord and as I did in that period of time, like when I was fasting and I had just deleted the OnlyFans and whoa. After a few days, um, I did want to try to get back into eating like a, a small amount of food. But every time that I would just like eat like a little bit of applesauce or like a little bit of yogurt, like anything that I would eat, like my body would immediately like reject and I would like throw it up. And then I actually started seeing blood in the throw up. And then it, it got to be like increasingly more and more amount of blood and actually on the third day of vomiting blood um i got rushed to the er because i had just thrown up like huge huge chunks of blood like it was a huge amount of blood and i started to have like serious internal pain i started to like feel like my body going like numb and i thought i was dying so i had my brother rush me to the emergency room and I remember just like, I remember passing this homeless guy on on the street corner. Oh, and he had been there like since I was a little kid. He had decreased every single year before my eyes. He had become like skin and bones and the drugs were just eating him away, you guys. I just remember driving past him and crying and saying, God why have I never prayed over this man till now <laughs> I haven't seen this guy before my own very eyes well I've grown up in a home you know making bad choices too but that could have been me with where I was on drugs when I was like 13 to 15 if it weren't for the grace of God that could have been me on that corner deteriorating before your very eyes and I just said, God, and then I was just struck with such sadness. And I said, God, I said, God, if you would just sustain my life, I will use it for you. And I will witness to everyone I have an opportunity to. I will, I will not hesitate to share the gospel, Lord. Help me to just harvest souls to you. <laughs> and I remember my brother telling me and saying, God had just, just told you to peace harvest. 
harvest peace. And my brother said, I don't think that God would have told you that if he was just going to let you die now. <laughs> Praise the Lord he didn't. Praise the Lord he didn't. I got to the ER and I, I walked in there like carrying a few books, like my Bible and like a couple other like good books. You know, I was like trying to like sign this waiver, but like I could, my hands could barely even like sign the thing. I thought I was dying and I was like, they need to get me back to a room as soon as possible because like, like I was like physically like I was going. Like while I was like signing the waiver form and like there was like a lady checking me in, like, I prayed out loud and I was like, God, like just be with me right now. I was like, help me. Like literally um, spiritual warfare is so real because the lady who was checking me in, she literally threatened to have security come remove me from the hospital when I was like dying before her eyes, told, showed the lady the picture of the blood that had thrown up. Like she's upset and like threatening to kick me out because I'm holding like books Bible books, I'm praying, and I'm like speaking about God. Whoa, that just made me stand more firm. I did not back down. Like I, I kept listening to my worship music on my phone. I kept like having my brother like read me the books in the waiting room while I waited to get into a room. While I was in the waiting room, um, my mom started rushing there. My grandparents started rushing there. Um, my dad was actually out of town, so it was really sad because I, I actually called him in the waiting room and like th said my final goodbyes because I thought I was dying. And my my grandparents showed up minutes after I got put into a room. Um, my mom got there a few minutes before I got put into the room, so thankfully she was able to go into the room with me. But actually, after they admit one person into the room with you, no one else could go back there. And she couldn't even, like, go out and, like, switch out with, like, my grandma or my grandpa, like, one at a time. They just only would let the one person that you originally went in there with stay with you. I thought I was dying. And I was like, this is so sad how we're separated. Like, the devil has done stolen so much from us. With this pandemic, now they're only letting one person back into the emergency room with you. You're on your deathbed? And and they're just not even going to let you say your final goodbyes to your family. God pulled me through at the hospital. And the hospital actually concluded that I was experiencing... They said that I was experiencing like PTSD from what I was coming to terms with. Because on that seven day fast that I had just been on, I had been having a ton of realizations about my life. And I think that the fasting was actually bringing me to that. I was just like straight up spent like an hour on my phone just like typing out like and just like deciphering and like digesting and healing from like some of the traumas that I had been suppressing for years. I was actually able to recall um, a time when I was like blacked out and I had been sexually assaulted which was really traumatic for me. Um, I had been, yeah, I had just been coming to terms with a lot of things that I had been suppressing. And then I had been actually, since I had just given up my OnlyFans, I was actually coming to terms with all that I had put myself through for the last few years that I couldn't get back. And like, once you, once you do like get out of it and then you like, you let yourself heal from it and come to terms with everything that you had just put yourself through, it's a lot. It hit me like a train. And while I was hooked up to the heart rate monitor, every time that I would, my mind would drift back to OnlyFans and the stress that I was under, my heart rate would soar back up to 150. Like re reinforce those thoughts and, and start talking about Jesus and like start reading like my prayer book. My heart rate would go back down to like an even like 80 or like a 90. Like I'll actually attach a video here that I took while I was in the hospital when this was happening because I wanted to share that when I share this testimony. Okay, so and about 142. You need to calm yourself down, Mark. Okay, calm yourself down. Think, of, think about something happy. Think about being on the beach. Yeah, the God's waves. got me. Surfing. God's got me. Oh, surfing. surfing. Oh, good. Yeah. You're doing God better. is steadying me. See, this is what happens when you have faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. You can just do the impossible. See, when my, when my eyes are you, it's in the 90s. I can sustain that. I feel calm here. 
Yeah. But um, if I stop talking about Jesus right now, watch it go back up to like 130. Like, keep, yeah. let's keep talking about Jesus. Jesus, 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 I love you. I love you. You're the author and maker of my soul. So after the doctors concluded that I was dealing with PTSD symptoms, they also told me that I was in a Crohn's flare up um, because I do have Crohn's disease. And they were thinking that like the increased vomiting may have like led to the blood. They sent me home from the hospital. Um, they like got me on a ton of medications. Less than three days later, me and my entire family came down with COVID because I think we got COVID in the hospital. And then on top of it, um, I got a, a kidney infection and I had to go back to the ER. It started to get really painful. And I went through terrible, terrible sickness. Like after, yeah, after giving up OnlyFans, whoo, my body went into like this horrible being super sick for a while. I just remember asking God, like, why am I going through all this? I just gave up everything for you. And now I'm hit with all of these sicknesses, God. Like, why are you putting me through this? It was God's strength pulling me through that horrible, horrible time where I was going through lots of sickness and facing all of the strong PTSD symptoms like because I had just quit the OnlyFans and I was like really coming to terms with it. Now I've been focusing on healing and I've been focusing on growing my relationship with God and he is filling me with newfound strength, with joy and peace and my life feels so much better than it's felt in years. And it's it's definitely been a hard time in life. I have days where um, I get stressed out about money and I feel like oh, I'm just gonna have to go back to OnlyFans like but I'm not gonna do that and I know there's people like I get a lot of people commenting me oh you'll be back there in no time well I can't wait to prove you guys wrong I really can't because God is in me and him what he started he will surely bring to finish I'm not I'm not gonna let the old ways win um I'm, I'm going to be fighting this battle and it's going to be still a, a constant battle and it's going to be a hard, it's, it's, this is like the hardest transformation I've ever made in my life because, um, I, I've been realizing all the, all of the ways that I've been living for the past decade. Like I really started to get mixed up around 12 and, um, I just turned 21. So for like the last nine years of my life, I've been living like hell and I've been saying I love God, but I mean, maybe I thought I did, but I wasn't living for him. I didn't have a true relationship with him. That, that wasn't what he wanted for me. And so after, I'm so glad that I had the courage to finally let go of that, you know, the money that was coming. Yeah. I mean, I guess I just... It was so hard for me to let go of that because it was so easy to do. And, you know, it's like, it's kind of like selling drugs. Like, that's like addicting, but it's like a horrible, horrible business to be in. And you have to realize that not all money is worth it. Not all money is good money. Because some money comes at the price of your soul. And I tell you guys, OnlyFans money comes at the price of your soul. And to any young girls who may have been watching this and they may be thinking about starting the OnlyFans or maybe you've already started an OnlyFans and maybe you're feeling some of the same things that I'm feeling but if you haven't started one just please don't because I so wish I mean it would be worth so much more than any of the money to just be able to go back into that period of my life and just give everything to Christ because this OnlyFans stuff will only prolong your closeness with God. It will only prolong you from actually reaching your destiny that God has for you. And God has a, a special calling on each of our lives. You can either go the, the wide path or you can walk the narrow path. And it's not easy in today's, in this culture and in today's day and age to walk the narrow road. But trust me, it is worth it and it will be more fulfilling and bring you more joy than you will find anywhere else. Because everything out of God is, it is worthless.
I'm just so thankful that God was fighting for me throughout all those years of me making horrible, horrible, horrible choices. All my years of my own foolishness and my own rebellion. I mean, I don't even think I mentioned all the times that I ran away from home between 13 to 15. Like I was doing horrible stuff and I put my parents through so much and they loved me through it all. And I love them so much, but I feel so bad for what I put them through. I just have been living a horrible, 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 horrible life. But now I want to give it all to Christ. I want to die to myself and I want to live for Christ now. And that's it. I just know that there is nothing you will find more fulfilling in life. And I truly believe that the, the platforms that the Lord let me build off of horrible, horrible things. I mean, people followed me because I was posting bad photos and because I had OnlyFans. And I feel like maybe God let me get this platform that was built it for evil, you know? The devil meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You know, the Bible says that. And God will take what the enemy meant for evil and he will make it into something great so i truly believe that god is going to turn the ashes of my past and help somebody not make the same mistakes that i have made for the past 10 years of my life okay i'm only 21 and <laughs> it's so sad because like i can only remember back to like my early early childhood like, being someone that i truly like was happy with being because i've been like for the last 10 years suppressing my emotions, not healing, not amounting to who God has called me to be. And I believe that God's just been taking me on some detours. And I believe that detours are what we have to go through. And that's testing that will ultimately get us to our destiny. I just, I'm just done living for myself. I'm done chasing after money. I'm done chasing after fame. I am fully running towards the harvest fields and i am chasing after harvesting souls to the kingdom and to eternal life you guys were made by our heavenly father and he loves you so 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 much and he wants to be in a close intimate and personal relationship with you and like it would be so awesome to really bring some of my brothers and sisters to christ and then to be in eternity with each other forever. I mean, there is nothing more special or more beautiful than that. God is so amazing in the way that he's created life and given us purpose and given us hope. And even though this world is filled with so much evil and it's so easy to get sucked into that and get weighed down by it, God is fighting for you just like he fought for me. And he wants, he wants to have your heart. He wants to give you joy. And he wants to give you an abundance. And you're not going to find that if you keep living the same way that you've been living or that, like the way that I was living. Like even if you just are living like a, a decent, like regular life, you're not doing all those like crazy bad decisions that I was. You just don't know the Lord. I... God loves you and God wants to know you and you will never, ever, 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 ever find any true meaning in anything outside of him. And I just am so sad of all the times that I had an opportunity to like share the gospel and I was too ashamed to share it. I couldn't even really share the gospel for many years because I felt like a hypocrite. You know, I felt like I'm living like hell. You know, like I didn't even want to post about God on my Instagram because I was like, and I felt like I was kind of being a bad representation of like a Christian if I did post about God while I was like doing that stuff. Uh, that was just the Holy Spirit convicting me because I should have never doing, been doing that stuff. And that just shows that, you know, if you feel shame, if you feel like you need to hide something, you probably shouldn't be doing it. Um, Yeah, I hope that my testimony could inspire somebody maybe if you are subscribed to some only fans account just just remember what god says in proverbs 7 when he says sons pay attention to my words don't let your heart turn aside to her ways don't stray onto her paths for she has brought many down to death 
her house is on the road to Sheol, descending to the chambers of death. I just want you guys, my brothers in Christ, I want you guys to really listen to what God is saying and to take the word of the Lord seriously and to realize that it's not worth spending eternity in hell. Oh, the worst place you could ever imagine and be stuck in. And then once you're in hell, there is no hope for you. This, we're placed on earth and earth is a test of our hearts. And if you, I just pray that you, if you don't know the Lord, that you give your heart to him, that you find him because he wants to love you. He created you. He's your father in heaven. And if you, and we don't know, life is so short and is so precious. And at any second, you could die. Every second, there are people who didn't know God and they didn't give their life to him. And they, they're going down to the chambers of death. And if you want to choose to be ignorant and live with that, go ahead, chase after money, chase after fame, chase after the world. You don't, it's going to get you nowhere. It's going to lead you to anxiety, depression, and wanting to just die. Just find hope in Jesus Christ. He loves you. He made you. He created you. He loves you. He has it. You are loved, okay? To girls, girls who are like me, who are just broken and they're just looking for love and they just they want it. everyone wants to feel accepted you know <laughs> and you know i think money is something that makes us all feel like we're going to be more accepted in today's culture and money was such a big motivation for me to keep doing this thing girl let me tell you the money ain't worth it and if, if you're a girl and you haven't started an OnlyFans account, please never do it. Please never do it because, girl, go do something that, that you can go to bed and sleep in peace. Go do something that doesn't make you feel like all men are looking at you sexually. Do something that doesn't make you isolate yourself and want to die. I mean, this, this job makes you want to die. And I don't... I just know that there are so many girls who are probably feeling the same way that that job was making me feel. And I just don't want to see it take any lives. <laughs> and I don't want to see it take any lives of these men who were on there either. No, you are. We are all children of God, okay? And, and we got to give our lives to him and live for him. And I truly believe that we are in the last days. We're going to make another video on a different day where I talk about the metaphors that God was giving to me in that period of time. Um, it was just a lot. And I mean, I could honestly write a whole book through all the metaphors that he gave to me in that time. I truly would like to talk about it with you guys and share what God has placed on my heart. But um, I just really wanted to like, I just really felt like God was telling me to like get this testimony out there because every single day there are more innocent young girls signing up for OnlyFans falling into the same trap that I fell into and then there's gonna be so many girls who are feeling depressed and isolated and anxious and dealing with sexual trauma later and worse getting suicidal and I don't want any girls to be going through that and I just I pray that this video reaches the right girls and that it and I hope that the Holy Spirit speaks to you through my testimony and I am praying for all the all the men it's like kind of like we're both being battled with this you know this stuff on both sides like the men are being constantly tempted I mean like if if you have a phone you know you're gonna run into like these bad images they are out there they are being shoved in our faces it's dangerous actually like if you aren't careful your phone will be a gateway to pornography and to OnlyFans and to ultimately to Sheol okay and to chambers of death so what the Bible says. So just don't don't let your phone be used for that. But follow Christian pages. Like make your your phone your source of the gospel and 
hearing good news don't get um sucked into all that stuff that will rob you from years of your life it will rob you from years that you could have spent getting closer to god's destiny for you but like you if you just keep on those detours like, you're prolonging you're prolonging the abundant life that god has for you for those who aren't don't know the lord yet i pray that the lord will work in your heart and reveal himself to you and ask him to reveal himself to you if you don't believe in him ask him to show show you that he's real because he will <laughs> and when he does it will blow your mind i mean i will never doubt that god is real again i will never doubt it up until like this year i have always doubted is god really real like should i really like fully commit my life to this like Oh my goodness, I will never, ever, 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 without a shadow of a doubt, doubt that he's real again. Because he is made himself so, so, so known to me. And he spoke so clearly to me that um, I just can't do anything but live my life for him and fully for him now. So I just want to show you guys the good news that how he's changed my heart and like the work he is doing in me. And I'm just so excited to see what he has planned for my life now that I'm finally stepping away from all the darkness that had me sucked in for years. I'm so happy and so excited to see what God has planned for me and now walk into his plans for my life. Not my will be done, but his will be done. And, you know, the Bible clearly states that you can't, you need to be either hot or cold. Okay. He says, if you're lukewarm, I want to spit you out of my mouth. And I was lukewarm, you know, I, I knew about God, but I was still living like hell, you know, and, and the Bible also says this, it says that you can't serve two masters. It says you can't, it says you will either love one master and mm, let me read it. Matthew six twenty four says this, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And honestly, you guys, that's what I was trying to do for the longest time. I was trying to pray and I was trying to, you know, say I believed in God, but I didn't have a true relationship with him. And I was ultimately working for the devil because I was leading men down to the chambers of death. And I just pray that I can harvest some souls to Jesus now. I don't want to bring anyone down. I don't want to bring anyone down to death. I want to do God's work now. And if you're still, if you're watching this video, if you're alive, it's not too late, okay? His grace is so big. And, and, and you know what? If the sun sets you free, you are free indeed, okay? And the sun has set me free and I am free indeed. That's why I can freely talk about my darkness and my past and what i have been through because i am free from that god has set me free from that i am not the old rachel anymore okay when the sun sets you free you are free indeed it doesn't matter how dark your past is it doesn't matter what you have done god loves you there is nothing you could do that will surprise god he is gracious and merciful and he wants to wrap you in his love and forgiveness and in the shelter of his wings there is nothing more amazing and powerful than being in in a relationship with the one who created you the one who loves you the one who knit you together in your mother's womb i love jesus so much um i was just listening to a tony evans sermon like recently and it really spoke to me it, it was talking about detours and it says that he, he gave a metaphor kind of similar you know he says it's like an ironing board you put a shirt on the ironing board you iron it out you iron out all the wrinkles before you wear it you know you want it to look good well he said in the same way god will take us through testing and detours and he's just trying to iron out our wrinkles he wants to put us on he wants to wear us but he wants to look good when he does it okay he can't he can't wear us if we still have all these wrinkles and all this junk <laughs> so um i think that god has been ironing me out for some years okay and now i'm i'm done living like the old way i'm giving it all to him and i want and i want to look good when he in, when he puts me on <laughs> I love you guys. Um, thank you to 
the people watching this, thank you to those who are supporting my journey um, and my transformation and my giving my life to Christ. I hope that you've felt, felt some encouragement through this video. Our Father is in heaven is so amazing. Hey, I hope that you can get to know him and have a close and personal and intimate relationship with you because he loves you and he wants to know you. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see where God takes me now. Um, <laughs> I'm walking in his steps. I'm just letting the spirit lead me and um, whatever, whatever his will for my life is now. There's just nothing the devil can do to stop me. And I know all hell is trying to push against me right now because I am fighting for Christ and I am like, I'm, I'm leaving hell and I'm just taking, I'm trying to take, take people with me, take them out of the dark places that I just came from. <laughs> I pray over all of you in the name of Jesus. I love you guys so much. Thank you for listening to my testimony and I look forward to being united with my entire family in Christ um, for all of eternity is going to be truly, truly, truly amazing. I love you guys. Bye.